Hey guys, welcome back. We're here at Waters and Potomac Mills and we're talking to Jeremy, who is the head brewer at, uh, at the location here. And we're gonna talk today about IPAs. So Jeremy, uh, real quick, sh uh, tell us a little bit of the history behind how the IPA came to be. Okay, I mean, a lot of people hear the story of, um, you know, ships were set in sail for India and they needed, you know, to have a sustainable beer to, to arrive in India right. uh, from the from uh, UK. Um, th there is some truth to it, but it's not the whole story. Uh, there's bits and pieces of it, but generally IPAs uh, for shipment over to India started in 1815, maybe a little bit earlier. Um, and really the catalyst brewery for that was the um, Old Bow Brewing Company. Um, a lot of people say they came from Burton on Trent. Burton on Trent did do uh, versions of their India Pale Ales, uh, but that came a little bit later, probably around 1829, something like that. So that would have been uh, like Bass or a number of other brewers. Right, right. Um, the more classic examples. Yeah, yeah, but the idea behind having hops in a beer was that it would survive the journey from the UK to India right. um, a little bit better. That's that's what I know of it anyway. Right, right. Makes sense. Makes total sense. Mm -hmm. So the IPA sort of dropped out of favor uh, in popular culture anyway sure. for a number of years. And then in the last, say, decade or 12 years or so, it's been the most popular style mm -hmm. uh, for, for craft breweries. Why do you think that this particular style is so amazingly popular and sells so well? Well, I mean, there's a couple of different reasons. Um, one of the reasons that it wasn't a thing for a while because we were inundated with Bud, Miller, Coors, just the, you know, the big three, um, up until probably the early mid nineties. And then IPA sort of kind of snuck in a little bit. Um, people were looking for bigger flavors. They were looking for, and that, that's continued. And one of the reasons IPA continues to be, you know, a tour de force is that you know, craft brewers tend to not tire of, of the idea of brewing IPAs, but want to reinvent it in a little bit of a way. So you're seeing iterations of the IPA, meaning a, uh, a juicy New England style IPA or, you know, the West Coast IPA, San Diego sort of style. And then, you know, different iterations like Brute IPA have even come along yeah. now Sour IPA. So um, all of them are falling under that generally very hoppy umbrella. Um, but uh, yeah, they harken back to that original, uh, that original style. Yeah. You know? And Jeremy, how how would you say do you approach the relationship between malt and hops? What I'm trying to do with a uh, with a malt bill is to try to build something for the hops to stand with, but it's it, it acts as almost like a balance or a ballast to like an onslaught of hops. Um, if, if we have too thin a beer, if you have a beer with no body, uh, it's going to taste like like hop tea. Like, like harsh. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. It, it, it'll, be, yeah. it'll be just too much. Um, so you wanna have a nice um, ballast. I think that's the right word I'm looking for. Um, yeah, to cover yeah, that, you, you know, need full- to support it. To, that full like sprint into a hop yard. Right, right. Um, you have to have something to like, kind of stand, like to balance that up or, or to, to, yeah, to brace it. So normally I'm looking for, um, when I build an IPA, I'm looking for a, a good base malt. It can be almost anything. You can do it with pills. You can do it with pills too, yeah. You know, whatever. But um, with that, along with that, I'm always gonna have some element of Munich, some element of wheat. Um, the wheat's gonna add a little bit of body and as, as will the Munich. Munich is almost, you know, as fermentable as, you know, a base malt. And it can be used as a base malt, but it, it lends a character. Yeah that you're not going to need to use crystal malt uh, right, right. with. I generally stay, stay away from crystal malt. As an aside question, I want to ask, are you guys heavily into oats, flaked oats, mm -hmm. wheat, flaked wheat, stuff like that to give the beer, generally these ingredients give the beer a bigger body sure. uh, when used in combination especially, and that's what gives you that sort of super hazy uh, yep. kind of consistency. Really where the, the, yeah, mm -hmm. where the proteins kind of stay in suspension. Mm -hmm. Are you guys... Uh, do you guys shy away from that, or, no. or do you embrace that? Sort no, of we style? we embrace that with if it's de it's dependent on style. You know, I'm not going to do that with a West Coast IPA. Sure, obviously. Um, but with yeah, with something like uh, like a juicy IPA, we're not. I'm not looking for a hazy IPA. I'm looking for that juice character generally. Got it. Um, 
the haze just comes along with that because of the you know the polyphenols and, and whatnot. But um, yeah, yeah. I mean, we're gonna we're gonna use some oats. We're definitely gonna use um, wheat, um, and then anything anything else. We really haven't. We're not the brewery that's gonna throw flour in the uh, in the kettle, you know, <laughs> just for haze because haze yeah. isn't the goal. Yeah. That juicy character is the goal. Um, yeah. Yeah. Nice. You know, also water chemistry plays a lot into that as well. So to, to keep the mouthfeel up, I mean, brewers will generally use a, uh, a portion, uh, a good sizable amount of calcium chloride to sort of augment their water. Right, right. And we do that too. Okay. Yeah, a lot of breweries do. I mean, I, you know, the water consistency, I mean, even with the bigger breweries, mm -hmm. like consistency is key. Oh, yeah. So stone on the West Coast will modify the water in a specific way and then that chemistry will transition over to the Virginia you know brewery mm -hmm. and it's just you have to do it it's, absolutely it's kind of one of those things you have to do mm -hmm. well the water supply is going to change you know right, people right. talk about the you know the main you ingredient have to constantly in beer test it yeah. Too, yeah. and the main ingredient in beer is water first right. and foremost so we want to have a good water supply coming in and know what we have right, right, um, right. so that we can augment it and burtonize it make it like burton on trans water if yeah, you want yeah. to or you know like a, a, a new england style ipa sure. is generally higher in chloride so then what's your take on single hop beers we're actually drinking uh this single hop beer <laughs> so you know talk oh yeah i can't pronounce the name what is, i was gonna say <laughs> what's it called <laughs> it's, it's, oh, you nailed it yeah that's fine <laughs> Motueka uh, is the only hop used in this beer. So mm -hmm. obviously this question was actually formulated before we even got here, not knowing that you guys made this sure, beer, sure. Um, but here we are. Um, it's delicious. I, I've never had a, a Motueka beer solely right. with just Motueka. Right. Um, it's, it's a unique taste. Yeah. Uh, rather bitter, but this sharp notes of grapefruit and, and sort of this grassy characteristic yeah. that is kind of underlying um, so, first of all, what's your take on single hop beers, and do you plan on, you know, producing more of them? We do single hop beers. Uh, we have one on almost all the time. Um, and really, it's because we're trying to figure out what some of these hops are when they're, you know, when they're, when they're released. We don't know. <laughs> you know what I mean? Until we try it and brew with it, we're not really sure. True, yeah. So, oh, thanks, bud. But, wow, That'll look work. at that. Ah. I love my job. <laughs> Oh yeah, we're using it as a as a jumping off point to kind of figure out what these hops actually taste like, so that we can make a better beer the first time we use it in a, in a bigger batch. Got that's, it. that's the yeah. idea. So in this, I was expecting to find notes of uh, like lime and lemongrass is kind of what I was looking for. Not as tropical as some of the other yeah. New Zealand hops, but it definitely has this kind of like character of a West Coast IPA where yeah. it's got that earthiness it's to the it's bitterness. Like yeah, a, it's, it's hop like a West Coast IPA. It definitely is, yeah. And then Whirlpool hops, but it's like, Whirlpool. A, like an East yeah, Coast exactly. IPA. So exactly. it's, it's the best, it's, it's a really no coast good. IPA. Yeah, or it's both the both coast, coast yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I should drink that too. Boy, this is, I'm It's freaking fisting. delicious, yeah, no. Well, that's a good place to be, man. <laughs> Can't complain on a Friday These are the afternoon, right? <laughs> These are the problems of being a brewer. This is what I do all day. Pretty much. <laughs> yeah. Taste stuff, and then at the end of the day, and you drink out of a horn. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So now we have a viewer requested question. Jeremy, are some hops harder to come by due to the seasonal changes, or are hops available year round for Just particular beers? Yeah, we can. I mean, generally, we get whatever we're whatever we're looking for. It's like how much you're willing to spend for. Right. Um, I know in 2008, there was a horrible year for um, Centennial in, I want to say it was Yakima, but you know, in other areas you can get Centennial from. So there's, there's enough to be had. It's just, what are you willing to spend, you know, for that, that home. So and we have the benefit of, we're, we're, we're a small brewery, you know? So the, so the prices are a fluctuate, oh, but yeah. the hop availability is just available, it's always available. In the volumes that we need, we've been able to find, you know, uh, anything that we want. I wanted to, to, I wanted a South African hop to do a single hop with um, last time around. And we found uh, Southern Passion from South Africa at a reasonable price. So, and that, you know, we learned what that hop does. It was actually pretty interesting. It had like a, um, what's it, like a bergamot. Okay. Like, almost like a, uh, like a tea-like yeah, quality to yeah. it. I really liked it, it was citrusy, but, had a dryness that was sort of like reminiscent of bergamot. Um, but yeah, we can get pretty much whatever we want. It's just, are we willing to spend $30 a pound? Right, right. 
Makes sense. Sometimes most of the time, yes. Yes. Most of the time, it's worth it. Sometimes yeah. it's not. So most of the time, most of the time, it's worth it. Yeah. So, so between the two breweries, yeah. you actually travel between both and brew at both. At the same time, it's amazing. That's crazy. No, no, no. I, I, I'll drive. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. Yep. I thought you flew. Or, I no. Don't know. No teleportation. No, here. not yet. Finger snap. That was why I had. Yeah. <laughs> That's why you keep the glove on. <laughs> Just in case. Just in case you accidentally snap and you get teleported over here. Yeah. So, but yeah, beer moves between these two facilities all the time, constantly. Yep. And everything available here is available there. All the time. So any any one you choose, you can get the same same offerings. Oh yeah, we have the same same stuff. Nice. Same stuff and uh, um, the same very good service with a smile. You just don't know. Yeah, I see, right I see the eyes yeah. going like this. You can tell. Even in COVID <laughs> days, you can see people smiling like this. You have to smile extra hard. So people or I just do this. <laughs> and it looks like I'm smiling, but I'm really not. You're scowling. Yeah. Oh my goodness. <laughs> but it looks like I'm smiling, right? Yeah. It does. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. You can hide it. I need to rethink this whole thing. Yeah. All right, guys. Well, that does it from us. Big shout out goes out to the Waters End crew for having us out here and to Jeremy for taking the time to talk to us about IPAs. Until next time, stay crafty. Cheers. 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 All right, guys, that does it from us. Big shout out goes to the Water's End brewing crew for having us out here, and to Jeremy, who was amazing, and he took all this time just to talk to us next time. Until next time, stay crafty. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers.